Wow. Everyone, uh, I didn't think this was going to be so overwhelming, so <laughs> let me enjoy a second. Um, hola, hi everyone. I, I can't start without thanking Maggie for all the work. She's a heart behind this. Um, and I can't tell you the patient of a saying that she has. Uh, and I'm very thankful for the space that you created for us to share our stories. OK. Um, so my name is Daniela Paz Peterson. And I believe that parks can be salad bowls. Um, before, keep moving forward too, you may notice that I have an accent. It's, it's true. You're not imagining it. <laughs> and I want to assure you that I'm funnier and smarter in Spanish. <laughs> but what you get today is my fantastic accent. Um, so bear with me, and I, won't have, I have an invitation for you. I'm going to have an imaginary party, a dinner party. And each one of you is bringing a salad bowl. OK. So now think, we all think about what are you bringing to my dinner party? What kind of salad are you bringing? Is your grandma recipe? Or you have, you know, the New York Times <laughs> app, and you're going to use it? Or is whatever, whatever you have left at home? OK. So we are at the party, and some people arrive, and their bowls are empty. Something's off, right? Uh, other people brought all the vegetables in a plastic bag. One person brought this huge ball, but inside was a tiny little spoon of quinoa salad. <laughs> but this other person brought a tiny bowl full of vegetables, so it was falling, something's off. And I think for a long time, this is the way we are thinking about parks. Something is off. We've been focusing so much about the ball and not about the salad. What I mean about this, when we think about parks, we normally think about what we can see, the physical aspect. When you can see it, the slide, and we spend so much time talking about parking. <laughs> but we don't talk about the salad, the vibrancy, the colors, the community. Who is going to be using this park? So it's not the physical infrastructure or the social infrastructure. It's both. We should be able to talk about parks in the same way that we talk about a salad bowl that is a space for everyone, that everyone has space in this bowl, and the salad is colorful, and it sm smells great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm from Chile, um, a country that is always about to fall into the ocean. It's like right there. So you always kind of like have conscious of the water. Like, you are close to the water, you can smell the water, so it's always there. So I grew up in the north of Chile, which is very different from the south. Um, and my mother used to take us to the beach, like, almost every day. So I'm going to tell you, it was kind of like growing up in this eternal summer camp. And my mom also was a kindergarten teacher. She still is. So also, I have the situation. Imagine being one of the two favorite students. That was me. So we used to pack, and we used to walk down to the beach. It was like a 20, 30 minutes walk, which it was like one or two kilometers, which for you is like 1.6 miles. Um, and we used to spend like the whole day there. We used to be there with my brother, and we have snacks. And all the snacks, all for sure, they have sand in it. Um, and we just like be there. Growing up, we couldn't go all the time to the beach anymore because we have to go to school. But it was always like this like activity, family staple activity. Um, the ocean wasn't a context for me. It wasn't a stage. It's part of my story. It's one of the characters. 
So let's go back to this incredible eternal summer camp. Um, so we was, oh, I completely forgot about this. Okay. All the art is from my friend Alana Kinsel. Um So I want to represent this like very colorful um, childhood. So well, let's go back to my summer camp, eternal summer camp with my brother. So we were on the beach and then we used to go back home and we walk all the time. At home, we used to watch TV. We were tired. Uh, I have really good memories with my brother. And in particular about one guy. Uh, he used to look at the camera with that red hat. And he was always in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we used to watch this guy with the red hat. He was always in the middle of nowhere, the ocean most of the time, looking at the camera. And he was always looking like he was doing important things. Whatever he was doing, I don't know if it was the red hat or what, but he was doing important things with really important equipment. And when he talked, you could hear the waves crashing into Calypso, his ship. This was like incredible. And he also had one of the phrases that I liked the most, that we only protect what we love. And we love, we only love what we understand, and we understand because we were taught to do it. When I think about this, I also think, well, I love the ocean. But I didn't recognize myself as an environmentalist, conservationist. I was many things. I was a daughter. I was a sister. I was a friend. I was a runner-ish. I was a flute player. But I wasn't an environmentalist. And I didn't understand why. One of the reasons, I think, is because he felt so disconnected from where I was, so far away, so far, so far removed from reality. Also, we didn't look very similar. <laughs> um, first, he was a man, an old man. I was at, I'm tiny, imagine I was tinier. Um, and he was in the middle of nowhere. I was in a city always full, with full of people. But I also loved the ocean because I was taught to understand it and to respect it. So what happened? What was the disconnection? Uh, <laughs> so I was completely, it was completely disconnected. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's actually very, a very comfortable position um, because someone else is important things. Someone else is taking care of that. And it wasn't me, and it didn't have to be me. Also, the scarcity mindset allows me to always see what I didn't have, what I was lacking. Also very comfortable. But working for the past seven years with the Trust for Public Land, I work with communities, and we create parks and public spaces. But it's still working with them having the red hat, with the, the guy with the red hat on my head, I still didn't feel like one of them. So I, used, I worked for the conservation space, for the environment, but I wasn't part of that. And no one was telling me, I want to be very clear, no one was telling me that I wasn't part of it, but it was easier to see the differences. Like, no one looked like me, or I didn't look like them, no one had this fantastic accent. <laughs> and most importantly, no one that I knew with my background was part of it. Even more weird, like I'm not your first choice when you think about conservation. I'm a social worker from Chile with a beautiful accent, with a background in women's and children's rights. So I'm not your first option because we have separated conservation and community. We have excluded ourselves for the work that we're doing. And that's one of the reasons that I work in Salad Bowls, because I believe that parks can have their weapon for change. <laughs> yes, we have separated, um, and I'm not your first option. But throughout these years I'm working in Chattanooga, what I have learned is that every one of us, and I want to be clear, every one of us 
has a role. And all the things are important things. Even if you have the red hat or not, everyone has a role. And when everyone has a role, my perception change. And also, well, I have responsibility too. So if you ask me a few years back, who was the first environmentalist that I knew of it? Probably I would say the guy with the red hat. I don't dare to pronounce his name. My French is awful. I'm just gonna keep saying the guy with the red hat. But if you ask me now who was the first environmentalist that I met now, I will tell you that was my grandma. My grandma didn't finish school. She lived by herself in the middle of nowhere in Chile. And she started recycling cans back in the 90s when it wasn't trendy and everyone thought she was crazy. I also think about my mom because since I remember my mom visit people in hospitals that don't get visits for different reasons. She always walked to the hospitals. She always explained me what was happening. He ne she never threw food away and she always tried our clothes in the stand. If you ask me now who I think about an environmentalist, it is an environmentalist in Chattanooga, I would say Isabel. Isabel is a neighbor in Eastlake. Eastlake community, Eastlake Park, the first park in our city. And uh, we were doing an intervention there, an asphalt art, which is when you paint the street. Um, we were working there for a few days. And she walked by at the end. Uh, she stopped and asked like, what was happening, and I explained to her this was to make the street safer. And I would never forget the moment that she understood the design. The design, one component of the design was a frog, frog that was used in the textile in Guatemala. When she realized that those frogs were her frogs, her water eyes, Her eyes water. <laughs> you got it. They have Thank you. Lagrimas. Um, my eyes also water because I felt that that moment is a moment that she felt seen and in our park. And it was her community too. So for all those reasons, I keep working in salad balls. <laughs> and I think that when we work in parks, when we see people reflected in what we do and what they do, we also create an opportunity for us. And that's a privilege. We create the opportunity to ask ourselves, how do we want to be remembered as a community? How do we want to be remembered in the existence of our community? How do we want to be remembered as a salad? How do we want to be remembered in the vault that we create together? It's a vault that contains everyone, that everyone feels welcome, that everyone has a space, that we accept everyone as it is, even if the tomato didn't want to be cut. It's an opportunity. So just to finish at the end with this opportunity, um, I think that is so, so powerful as a new American, as an immigrant, what I'm telling you is that we have the opportunity to our parks with people that have been forgotten, to people that didn't have space in our history, the people that historically have been like challenged. And even when those people take part, take part in the parks that we create, what we're doing is, it's we're allowing our public spaces to tell those stories, to not be forgotten. We are allowing, we can, we have the privilege to say, this is the salad that we want to be, and the ball is gonna be a testament of that. Our parks are gonna be a testament of the community that we want to be, and who is gonna be involved, and who is not gonna be forgotten. So what I ask you today is chin chin. Well, oh, that's. <laughs>
what I ask you today, <laughs> it's to protect what we love. To protect what we love. I love my community, and I know you do too. But I also want to ask you to understand it. And please, don't forget the salad, because we don't want empty balls. 